And so I remember having like one dance with this older guy that was kind of uncomfortable because I didn't know anything. And I was like, okay, this is not for me. And I left. Um, and so years went by. And of course, now I have a lot more experience as a dancer. I dance, um, many different styles of dance. So I dance Zouk, Brazilian Zouk is my primary, but I also have done salsa and bachata. I've also done West Coast Swing. I've done uh, Samba de Gafieta and Bolero, which are Brazilian ballroom dances. So I have a decent amount of experience with uh, social dancing. And I thought, okay, I bet if I tried to do tango now, I would understand leading and following better. And I would pick it up a lot faster because, you know, it's obviously much harder to learn things when you have no body awareness. What do you think about that? Having... I mean, I do agree. I think that if you dance other dances, and I kind of dabbled in fusion for a little bit, and just, I, I kind of, like it does to a point, because maybe because I already have a lot of tango experience, mm -hmm. so I felt like those other dances kind of, I, I use my tango background to help me learn those a little bit easier. But yeah. does it, is there any shortcuts to get to tango? Uh, well, I mean, I think body awareness does help. I mean, like you've seen a lot of yoga people who do really well at tango. Uh, you see even a lot of um, people in other disciplines. I mean, I would, I would actually say, you know, I mean, Johnny did this whole video on boxing, boxing and the and tango. tango yeah. uh, I, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to recruit people from jiu-jitsu in the tango because there's a lot of um, similarities in terms of like, like the hardest thing being to walk through the person. And that's part of the, that's like wrestling one-on-one -on -one is to penetrate through them. But do you think that people that do those other things pick it up faster than the person that has no knowledge? I, I would disagree. It depends how similar it is because um, remember one of the things that you know your old partner Rochelle would say is that she knows someone who's a martial artist because they always have that one weird uh, you know forward right step of the tango close because it was because it they were so used to the reverse crescent kick mm -hmm. and it didn't feel right because of the way they did it so uh, I would say that there are similarities that could be drawn upon but also at the same time. Um, they have to realize that it's not the same thing and you can't shortcut your way through it necessarily. But you could prime yourself to learn faster, which is, I think those are two different things. I see. So my friend offered to teach me some basics and I said, absolutely. And he taught me for like two hours um, in his house, just dove right in and we kind of got swept away and it was so exciting and so much fun. And he's been doing tango for a very long time. I think he said he started doing tango back in the 90s. And so he was really excited for me. And he kept saying, oh, if I could just bring you to a milonga, like no one would believe that you've only been doing tango for, you know, two hours. And I was like, yeah, I just don't think that I'm ready for that yet. You know, like there are... He was already a Zouk dancer, so here is the interesting part, right? He was an experienced tango dancer, but also dances Zouk. No, he started dancing Zouk. Started dancing Zouk, I see. And then he started fusing the two together. Ah, uh, because I, I thought, because you can also cater to someone who, like, you can, well, you can. use your Zouk and, like, you know. Yeah, and kind of say, and, and make it more convenient to dance with someone who knows Zouk, yeah. right? And trying to mesh with tango. Yeah, but they might, but also, like, I feel that uh, there are similar, similarities between Zouk and tango. Uh, in terms of the forward step. I mean, I would say like Zouk is closer to Malanga than it is to Tango. Because mm. uh, you have that sway, you have, it's like, it's a very, um, I, mean, I guess a little, I, I guess a little bit of Zouk, uh, just because, you know, being in Capoeira and also, um, you know, I went to uh, a bachata festival where uh, they had Zouk and I was like, oh, this is interesting. But, um, you know, I would say that you could, in any dance, you could take like just the bare basics and kind of say, and, and kind of get someone to feel good if you already have like a certain amount of body awareness of like, let's say contact improv or something like that. So you could probably make this person feel good and say, hey, you're dancing tango. Right. To a social after only having a few classes. And it's just always a little bit stressful because, you know, you're trying to remember all the things that you learned and whatnot. And it's just not for me because I have a lot of anxiety. And so I, I said, oh, no, I don't think so. But then eventually I was kind of convinced because he kept suggesting these different events that were happening that weekend. And I was just visiting in New York. I don't live there. And uh, then some of my other Zook friends were, he was like, yeah, you know, if they want to come and I can show them some of the basics and you guys can just all come and it'll be a great time. And I was like, okay, well, if I have friends with me, then, you know, that's a little different because we can just drink and socialize and, you know, hang out.
if, you know, I'm not having a good time. And so we all went and, um, I had heard from my friend who is currently, or at the time was doing tango in Buenos Aires, that it's kind of a tough scene to break into, um, and a tough dance in general. And so I already was kind of on my guard and I walked in and the way that Solas is set up, um, is very, it's very narrow. And so there isn't a lot of room to kind of group and congregate. And so it was very difficult to like introduce myself to people or like break into conversations or anything like that. And so I ended up just kind of hanging along the wall until my friend arrived because I was like, there's no way that I'm going to be able to dance without like, let alone the fact that no one was really looking at me or inviting me to dance. So it's interesting. So she's talking about, um, El Destino, which is really well renowned. It's, I'd say it's by far the highest level of dancing in the U S and she's at this Milonga as a two hour beginner. <laughs> Yeah. You know, okay. So this is, this is something that really kind of bothers me. Like not El Destino, cause I think it was a great place. Right. But what bothers me is here's a guy who's danced for supposedly since the nineties, that's like 20, 20 plus years. Well, since the nineties, that's like almost 30 years, mm. you know, and they're going to introduce like someone who's danced for two hours and her zoo friends. And they're going to take them to a very cutthroat area. <laughs> I mean, it's the most advanced dancers in one milonga in a local milonga. I mean, it's like, it's, it'd be like you going to me and like, hey, Rob, uh, let's go, let's go play the NBA. Like, this guy is doing her dirty, man. I mean, I, I don't, I don't, for someone who's been dancing tango for 20 years, <laughs> even if it's Nuevo, <laughs> like, what the hell are you doing? Like, I would never take someone to El Destino if it's their first time. Like maybe after two years, maybe. <laughs> there are many other places that I would take this person to where they could have fun, they can grow into it, they can meet other people. They, or, or, you know, there's a place where people are more chatty, they're more welcoming. Um, I was like too scared to even think about doing it without him. So he showed up, we danced a couple of tandas together, and then, um, you know, he reaffirmed that he thought I was doing amazing and, you know, that I should go ask someone to dance. And he had mentioned Cabaseo and how that's, you know, a custom in a lot of milongas. But he said that in his opinion, modern day tango dancers weren't as beholden to tradition and that he had hosted milongas in Paris and Argentina and had been to milongas where that was not as much of a thing. Oh, <laughs> okay. This guy's definitely a Nuevo person. I mean, oh, Kinda um, except the Cabaseo? What? No. <laughs> what? <laughs> Dude, might as well jump in the ocean, cut your leg, and bleed out and be like, hey, sharkies. <laughs> yeah, they just kind of. Maybe. Maybe they. Are you serious? You're at the high, the most advanced Milonga in the US, and you're like, well, they, they kind of do the Cabaseo. That's terrible. That is absolutely terrible. And so he was like, you know, you can invite people. And so I said, okay, I'll invite people. Um, which, judging based off of what happened later, probably was a misjudgment on his part. But he had really good intentions. He had really good intentions. You know, the path to hell <laughs> is built on good intentions. He had really good intentions. You hear me? The path <laughs> to hell is built on good intentions. So I asked him, you know, who are some like good leads, like safe leads to dance with here? And he pointed someone out to me. And that's where the whole thing started going downhill, um, because the person that he pointed out to me is a very advanced dancer. But according to some other people I've spoken to is just has no social graces. And this guy was um, when he introduced me, my friend said, oh, this is Elena. She's a professional Zook dancer. She's a world champion and she's just learning tango. And I think that the guy like in his head probably thought like that I was going to be much worse than I was maybe, but when I- It doesn't matter. I'm sorry if you're a world champion in other dances, tango is, is different. You can't go to a Malanga in two, with two hours of a class and expect to be like, what are you expecting? Like, I, there's no, it does not translate. There's a reason why Argentine, people say Argentine tango is the most difficult dance. You know, see, I don't, like, it doesn't matter if you're a world champion. I mean, like, but also, like, even to take that in a different aspect, like, because I know, you know, like, we all agree that tango's the, the most difficult dance, you know, really heavily on connection. But 
What if we said, hey, I'm a Tai Chi master. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to join the UFC. <laughs> like, do you, know you, do you know how many Tai Chi masters get whooped on? <laughs> like, this girl is in for a rude awakening. I, I was like, okay, we've had an introduction. Now let me invite him to dance. And he definitely did not want to dance with me. Um, but he said yes anyway. What His exact words, I think, were like, I suppose, or something like that. I forget what I, what I wrote and what he said. But it was not an enthusiastic, of course, let's dance, right? So that already kind of took me aback. And My equivalent to this is actually uh, El Valenciano in San Francisco. I went there when I was two years into tango. Two years, not two hours, two years. I went to LV, I sat down, and our roommate, at the, or Johnny, introduced me to the people that he know, or he wasn't our roommate at the time, but he introduced me to a friend of his. I waited, I, I, I asked her to dance, and she said, sorry, I only do cabaseo. And I sat almost all night, and I was two years into tango. Yeah. She said two hours. Two hours. Yeah, but you know, to give her a little, just to, to play devil's advocate here and give her a little bit of a credit, it's a lot easier to break into a Malanga as a follow than it is as a lead. That is true. You know. That is true. Because um, I think, like... Especially in San Francisco, because <laughs> there's not as many follows. Yeah. But, but I mean, like, in general, like, I, I think guys don't get, like, the break um, as follows do, you know, because it's like, you're either a good lead or you're not. With a follow, it's kind of like, okay, if you don't know anything, a great lead can still lead you to have fun and do stuff. And then maybe he might have fun, you know, but uh, yeah. Um. And then he proceeded to teach me on the dance floor for the whole rest of the Tonda. Um, and okay. Have you ever seen anyone teach on the dance floor at El Destino? <sighs> or, at, or a high level Malanga? No, it's not enough room. And yeah, this is... See, that's the thing. You come from Zook and they have all this space, right? You, they have like, if you're the most advanced dancer, it doesn't matter. Cause like you're standing in one spot, there's no line of dance. You don't have to keep moving. You could stay in, in one place. In, El De, in, El, in any Milonga, you have to keep the line of dance moving in a compact place. Like, like El Destino, like, come on, like. All right, you know, uh, real quick. Anyone out there has been to El Destino? Like, we want to hear your thoughts on this. Yes. What was your first experience like at El Destino in New York? Let us know in the comments. And everything just kind of went downhill from there. Like I was feeling really off after that dance. I cried a little bit. Um, I danced again with my friend and I was feeling a little better. And then I invited a second person to dance. That one was actually really good. He was very nice. Um, and then I thought, okay, I'll ask one more person, um, to, to dance. And, uh, this is over the course of like the whole night. Right. And, um, I went up to this person that I had seen dancing and asked them to dance. And they looked me up and down and said, we'll see. And then immediately went and asked someone else as soon as the music started. So I was done at that point. Um, I had one more dance with my friend and then left. Um, and I decided to write the article because I was feeling really distressed. I had heard from multiple different people, from both my friend who was training tango in Buenos Aires and also from others that tango is, you know, not that welcoming. It's hard to break into. Okay. I mean, it is a valid point. Like we do have a reputation as ta in tango that to be on the snobbish side, to be on the unfriendly side, especially if you're not in tango. Yeah. But so me, I get what she's saying. Yeah. But, but take the flip side here. All right. I'm an American. Mm. I'm going to fly to France. Yeah. And I'm going to like not speak any French at all. <laughs> I'm going to demand, like, I'm going to go to a cafe and demand they give me a burger. <laughs> right. And I, I'm going to start like throwing ketchup all over the place because I, 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 I like to like drench my burger and fries and ketchup. <laughs> oh you know, someone's going to get offended. Yeah. And that's why Americans have a bad reputation when they go overseas. How's this different? <sighs> Yeah, I mean, you know, I mean, like, yeah, I get it. like, okay, Tango has a bad reputation for being unfriendly. Um, a lot of Europeans have a bad reputation for being unfriendly for to the American tourists. I get that, but at the same time, it's like if you take a little time to just sit back and appreciate the culture, you might pick something up and you might be accepted. 
But if you're going to barge in there, <laughs> you know, like, might as well, like, kick the table and spit on the floor. I mean, you know? Yeah. I mean, well, she's coming from a dance where, like, Zook, you dance, like, one or two songs, yeah. you know? And it's very fun. There's more rotation. People are really happy. And it's on those dances, they're partner dances, but they're not as, like, um... They're not as um, reserved. They're not as close contact. Yeah, it's as, it's it's uh, different. It's like there's more freedom of movement yeah. independently. Yeah. Right, in those dances. Yeah. Whereas tango is way more connected and moving together. Yeah. Okay. But again, it's going like let's take American Japan. I'm I'm a loud American. I'm gonna go to Japan. And be like, hey, I'm an American. <laughs> you know, they're gonna look at me all weird and be like, they're gonna be, like, pss, 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 pss. and they're you know I'm gonna be called a gaijin and everything. You know. I mean, to, it's it's not her fault though. Like her friend just set her up so bad. No, I like, agree. To I, say that there's no like, oh, who cares about the cabaseo and like not to not explain the, I don't. It's, you know, I. This guy's been dancing for about thirty years. Ugh, that's the, not a friend no, I want. I'm just saying. Who needs enemies? We got friends like this. But I thought they were exaggerating because you know I've had similar experiences with. Every other dance that I've done, except for uh, Samba Gigafieta, and that's because when I went to Brazil, I think the circumstances lined up right. I don't know if their community is clicky at all, but I've had similar experiences in every other dance style that I've done. Um, and as somebody who is a teacher in my local scene and a community organizer and has been since I started doing Zook, basically, it really hurt me to see that there didn't seem to be a lot of effort being put in, not from the people who I asked to dance, but the community at large didn't seem to be that welcoming. Um, from the person that checked us in to all the people that were standing on the wall, like um, it just felt as though I'd walked into a fancy dinner where I had no, you know, where they could tell I was poor at a glance. <sighs> on one hand, I want to say like, like, who are you to just go in there and expect everyone to just bow down and welcome, join us, right? Like, who are you? And the, but at the second, at the, at the same time, another part of me on the other shoulder is going, well, I kind of get that feeling where it's like, it feels like you're a private party and like everyone yep. knows each other and like you're the person, like it's like your friend that like invited you and you know nobody else. Or you could be the butt of the joke with the friend who invited you who's not really your friend. <laughs> <laughs> but... Uh... But, but, you know, the, the point that she's making is that, you know, Tango does lack a bit of customer service in America. Um, should every place be, you know, should every place be focused on being inviting and having great customer service? No. You know, just like we had the Studio 54 where people wait out of the lines, people would wait four or five hours just to be rejected at the front door. Yeah. You know, uh, maybe El Destino is just that place. So, like, you know... If you go into if you go into Studio Fifty Four, you're just happy that you got in there. But there are other clubs, there are other places that are definitely more friendly, that are definitely more customer customer service oriented. And I think, you know, this is just a rest a you know a recipe for disaster. I mean, to be fair, I know a lot of my friends that work at LD uh, El Destino, and it's just the environment. It's like the it's so narrow. And people in tango, I would say, are on the more shy, reserved, introverted side yeah. in general. Yeah. It's a dance where like, it's more internal. You connect internally with yourself and your partner. And it's not one of those social, like, social butterfly dances. I'm sorry. Well, yeah. But I also think that like, that's the culture of the place. I mean, there are other places where... It is a more, bit more, you know, social butterfly. I mean, you had, uh, you know, you helped out Michael with the the seventy thirty. That was very, you know, that was very social. Well, I mean, we're playing nuevo music. We're really like, you know, outside of the, you know, the norm. norms. Okay, but there there are plenty of other places. I, I ran Mio. That was pretty welcoming. I went out of my way to make sure customer service was, you know, the top of my priority. That place is spacious. There's a lot yeah. of room. It's a big vaulted ceilings yeah. this is at a bar and a narrow bar at that yeah and, and i think that's like that's the point i'm trying to make is that it's not tangled that's unfriendly uh it's really she it was wrong place wrong time and you know uh there could have been much better introductions to tango uh and her experience could have been catered a little better
sense, if that makes sense. Um, and I thought, like, this is not right from a human perspective, um, let alone like a dance community perspective. Right. Like, you know, there are rules and customs and people teach on the dance floor all the time in various dances and stuff. But people teach on the dance floor all the time. <laughs> no. That is not what you see all the time at Milongas. No, no. Not in tango. I'm actually, sorry. I, I, that is the exception. I would kick people out for teaching on the dance floor. Yeah, that's so. not a thing. I mean, yeah, that's just not a thing. I'm sorry. Yeah. I felt as though none of that made it okay. And that if I was having this experience, then probably a lot of other people were too. And that the best way to, like both process the experience and to spark a conversation would be to write about it. So I broke out my old blog, which I hadn't opened in like two years. And I wrote down everything that I was thinking and feeling at the moment. And usually with my blogs, I would try to temper my voice a little bit and try to modulate my, my tone and sound a little bit more hopeful or, um, uh, diplomatic. Right. But in this case, I was so upset. And I thought also from a social perspective, like a lot of times as women, I feel like women are told to modulate their tone and we police ourselves a lot more. And I thought I'm going to write this blog exactly how I'm feeling it and post it. <laughs> and I was shocked at the reactions that it got. Like, I wasn't expecting anyone from the tango community to read it. Honestly, I meant it more almost as a cautionary tale to the zoo community, like that. This is why it's really important for us to continue trying to be as inclusive as possible, because we don't want other people in our dance style to have this experience. Mm. <laughs> don't be like tango. Like, hey guys, I zook, all my zook buddies see this. I went to tango and it sucked. You know what? Okay. <laughs> Here's the thing. I mean, <laughs> a cautionary tale. Oh, okay. I, you know, I, I like Zook. I like the resilience. I like Bossa Nova. You know, nothing wrong with it. Uh, but, you know, this is just like, in any dance, there's, there's always that place that, that's pretty high level, you know, and it's a little more exclusive. The, the more you get away from being a, like a super inclusive place where anything goes, doesn't matter if you dance for one hour or a hundred hours, like anything goes, but there are places where like, you know, you better have game or you're not welcome. And that doesn't, it doesn't apply just to tango. It applies to like, I've, I've heard about it in Lindy Hop. I've heard about it in West Coast. I've heard about it in anything. So like as more, when the community gets bigger, then you'll, the community starts breaking out and you'll have that one high level place that everyone wants to go to, but they, they need to go prepared. And everyone knows that. El Destino is one of those places. It is. She just, you know. It's like her friend took her to like a pool hall with like all the professionals and like the hustlers. And she just wanted to learn how to play pool. <laughs> and she just got it's her cards. <laughs> she put her, her pink slip. <laughs> I'm playing for pink slips. <laughs> she bet it all. <laughs> Played eight ball. That's the furious. Too soon, Junior. <laughs> you know, I, I think we should table this um, because... There's a lot, this is a very loaded video. Uh, there's a lot to talk about here. Like, I think one of the problems that I'm seeing is that there's a lot, there's a lot of Americans who picture tango as a dance. And then there are people who accepted tango as a culture. And that's kind of the divide because, you know, she is, you know, um, if we're gonna start using other ideas, like she's using, her, you know, her norms and pushing it onto another culture saying, you should follow these norms because this is the norms I'm used to. Uh, this is the norms I see everywhere else in other, in other cultures. And you should be following those norms. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure you click that notification bell so you can get all the updates and make sure you subscribe to our channel. We greatly appreciate it. And it'd go a long way in helping us grow this channel and put out more content.